everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden Football on EA Sports. We're just about set to get started, and this ought to be a good one between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Tennessee Titans. With that, let's get you up to Nashville and Nissan Stadium. For the call, we welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Just off the east bank of the Cumberland River and across the water from the Tennessee State Capitol building, there's a look at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. The whole of downtown Nashville likely still reverberating with the sounds of the Titans taking the field a moment ago. They're ready for football as their Titans are set to match up with Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis, thrilled to be with you from the broadcast booth. And partner, before we get this thing started, what are you going to be watching? Who gets off to a fast start? In horse racing terms, they talk about catching a flyer out of the gate. Who sets the pace and makes the other team chase? started now the kicker Chris Boswell and off we go from Nashville this is taken at the three and he'll get it up to about the 26 yard line just across the 25 so the Titans set to go to work for the first time they're led out by their strong arm quarterback out of Texas A&M and that's Ryan Tannehill and many believe that Ryan Tannehill is ready to fulfill his promise been in the league a little while now been through some ups and downs some bumps and bruises but the talent is evident can run it can throw it and I think now he's ready to be a great leader It's brought in by Adam Humphreys. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 14 yards there on the first play from scrimmage. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed-out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Corey Davis, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. And we roll now on the graphics for the offensive starters. Let's take a look at the left tackle, Taylor Lewan. A big, gregarious guy with great athletic ability. Plays the game with a little bit of an edge. In fact, he doesn't play to the whistle. He plays to the echo of the whistle. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Now a first carry for Derrick Henry. Solid move, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. And the starting defensive unit here for Pittsburgh. Bud Dupree came out of the University of Kentucky determined to let everyone know that they play football there as well as basketball. A terrific pass rusher off the edge. And the Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. Ready, ready. From the gun, here's Tannehill. He finds Humphreys. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 37. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Now a carry for the shifty Deion Lewis. A loss of two there, second down. 
Moving backwards on first down, never a good thing. What does that do for the mindset on second down? Well, it changes your play call, definitely, because as a play call, you're advancing yourself, thinking, okay, we're going to get a gain here. Now you've got to go back in reverse, come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost, but gain a few extra. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Henry. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. We're scoreless after one. themselves another first down as the tackles made at the Steelers 16. Well sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well they said it with a chuckle they called him old reliable. Yeah that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to but he still knows all the tricks doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open he finds a way to pick up a first down. Now Lewis here on first down. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. It was Mike Hilton up to make the tackle. No gain on the play. Brings up second and ten at the 15-yard line. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Two minutes on the clock in what's been a scoreless first half. A reminder coming up at halftime, we'll check in with our Jonathan Coachman. He'll have highlights and analysis of the first half, and our highlights will likely be on the defensive side of the football here. Scoreless game. They will find Davis. That's complete. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. Open man is Davis. He's got it for the Tennessee touchdown. A five-yard touchdown catch. And the Titans take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. Well, that drive felt like it took up an eternity. We finally have some action on the scoreboard. Yeah, but plenty of action prior, too, because that drive took up all the first quarter before we spilled into the second. And finally, points were registered. On the other sideline, they're chomping at the bit just to get the football. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, and now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk. They'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. They had to go to the monitor, get an extra look. That's what the technology is for, and this touchdown will count. Ryan Suckup on for the point after. And this is good. Our score, 7-0 Tennessee. A 10-play drive that time. And the result in the end, a Titans touchdown.
Joseph now to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. So out come the Steelers now for their first drive. They'll be led out by a man who's becoming an elder statesman among quarterbacks in the league, drafted back in 04. It's Ben Roethlisberger. And his task in this situation is making sure this team knows that there's a sense of urgency yet somehow still stays calm because your natural impulse, your first possession is not until the second quarter, is you got to attack right away. Throw something big at them right away. Yeah, you've got to move the ball, but maybe be a little bit careful in doing so. Like 20. Let's go, Pete. It's going to be a long day, offense. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> On first down, it's Roethlisberger. And he connects with Vance McDonald. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It'll be a gain of 17 at a Pittsburgh first. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness, there's a premium for all of that now. Still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Now it's Roethlisberger. He'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So from the 39 now, check, they'll check, come up on a first and 10. To throw again is Roethlisberger. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives him a chance to regroup. Relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. So line of scrimmage still the 39 on second and 10. Again, it's Roethlisberger. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Again, it's seven yards. And it's third. A second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. Ben to throw again. And he finds McDonald. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans 21. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime.
So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. This will be, let's see, 38 yards out. Boswell's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So yes, they'll still be down going into intermission, but the deficit is now made even smaller, very manageable. Yeah, and if nothing haywire happens here in his last couple of precious seconds, they will go into the locker room with a nice bounce in their step, having gotten a little bit closer on the scoreboard. Successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. This one fielded at the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. Time for a final kneel down or a safe run, and then they can head to the locker room with a lead. Yeah, or they can even run a screen. You know, something they feel is somewhat safe that might actually pop and turn into a big play, that's what you usually run in this situation. Or go four verticals because why not? Because you're feeling it, right? <laughs> you're just feeling it. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports halftime report this game's had a little bit of everything thus far and certainly plenty to look forward to as the teams are right back out there for the second half so we'll get right back out there as well as we'll turn it back over to brandon Godden. all right coach thank you and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And with the way this offense has played thus far, to be frank, they got to feel pretty grateful to be in the ball game. I would agree with you totally because they've done all of nothing offensively in this game, yet they still find themselves in a position on this drive where a touchdown can give them the lead. They need to take advantage of it. And they're still looking for that first touchdown here in the third quarter. All they have so far, the field goal. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Uh, you got a young quarterback. You know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. On third down, Roethlisberger. But it's brought in by Washington. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. Mother! 
Like 80. 54. Let's go, defense. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. And yes, complete to the tight end, McDonald. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. On second down, Connor looking for space. And he'll get three up to midfield. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Again, a run with Connor. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Give him six yards in the first down. time to get another play in here as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL and it's on EA Sports. on first down and he's got his man the tight end McDonald and he gets this inside the 35 yard line it's a Pittsburgh first down a gain of 13 when this offense can get their tight ends involved they can move the football here a nice route able to look it in and picks up the first down from the 32 now here's first and 10 from the gun it's Roethlisberger and the catch made by Johnson. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. First down, Steelers. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And McDonald here over the middle. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. And now all of a sudden, the shoe's kind of on the other foot. Maybe you pull the reins back here a bit? Yeah, a little bit because you got to make sure that you don't score too quickly. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now it's Roethlisberger. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver. But it'll be second and goal. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Steelers have taken the lead. Wow. I know it's a never-say-never never situation. But to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but now you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way.
Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. A pretty long drive that time, 11 plays all told, and it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This fielded at the two. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. So now Tannehill and the Titans down 10-7 a little over 80 ticks to go they need at minimum three points out of this as they come up first and 10. line of scrimmage the 31 now on first and 10. Now Tannehill. He'll get this one into the hands of Lewis. Give him two yards on that play, and that'll make this a second down. It drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. Now Tannehill saying, let's get to the line. Now it's Tannehill. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 41-yard line. Okay, there's three timeouts left, right? Think you got to use one here, don't no you? No doubt about it. I'd use one right here. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Incomplete. The intended receiver that time, Adam Humphreys. And it's second down. Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown, and that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. They run with Lewis out of the gun, and this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Wow. 
So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to potentially send us to overtime. And a 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period. now at 10 apiece as the kicks away. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Tie game and barring something incredible here, we're likely headed to overtime. And just a couple of scenarios here to keep in mind. One, if you want to be really aggressive, you do throw the Hail Mary and see if you can get something downfield. What would you do? What I would do is either hand it off inside or more likely I take a knee and let the clock run out. Because if I'm back there trying to throw and a sack happens, the ball comes free, I can lose the game here. If I get to overtime, I can still win it. Let's see if they are in line with Charles Davis. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This one fielded at the five. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. And the drive starts with a completion left side. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. They only got a yard out of that last completion. And that makes this second and nine. A second down run with Lewis. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. It's a gain of three. Brings up third and six. Opening drive of overtime and now facing a third down and six. Big play coming up. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And that will be incomplete. The temptation to go for it probably there always is, especially in overtime. Got to punt it, though. I think you're right. I think that you absolutely have to punt it away and trust your defense, especially play a little field position here. But you're so right about the temptation. Another way to satisfy that, though, line up in punt formation and fake it. That's another way to get it done. On is Kern, the punter, to send this one away. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. 
And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked out and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it, but they turned it back over to them, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? Yeah, part one is done, now part two. They start with a give to Connor, and he's going to lose yardage back to his own one-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that, got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They'll stay on the ground with Connor again. And now where are they going to mark him here? Well, they say he did get back to the one-yard line, but that could have easily been two points the other way. Now another timeout called for by the offense. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone. They need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. On third down, it's counter. And able to get a little more breathing room out to the five-yard line. Call it a gain of four, and it'll bring up fourth down. We often talk of situational football. Let's just call it team football. The defense did their job, got off the field, brought the punting situation, so they're turning the ball back over to their offense. You think those guys would get along very well right now? Of course they will. Defense helped the offense. Now it's their turn to take it downfield. Here's Jordan Berry now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And where will this be spotted? The side judge says it went out just across midfield. The Titans offense now, they get ready to do battle again here. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. He's going to sling this deep downfield, and that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. Keeping the aggression going on defense in overtime here, a first down blitz. You know you can get burned on it big time if they pick it up, but in this situation, they brought the blitz, put some pressure on the QB, and he wasn't able to complete a pass downfield. Second and 10, Tannehill once more. Got him in, it's Brown. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Now another timeout called for by the offense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. On now is Ryan Suckup for the field goal try. This to win it in overtime. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. That's their second and last timeout here in the overtime session. We'll be back. On now is Ryan Suckup for the field goal try. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. 
Now remember, this one is not over, but with the time running short here in this overtime, that could very well be the game winner. Yeah, remember now, the other team does get a possession, but when the clock runs out, that's it. So that was a well-calculated drive to use up the majority of the clock and leave your opponent with little to no time left. We were just treated to an absolute dandy in this one. A great finish in overtime with a long field goal. Everybody, including us, on the edge of their seats. Quite a game. And it's rare that you get a game into overtime that it doesn't turn out to be a dandy, right? That's what we saw here. And just what you were talking about, a long field goal to win it. So definitely not a gimme. So there was tension all the way through until the ball went through the post. But it did go through the post. Ice water was in his veins. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the